Good morning, endurance friends. Matt Mossman, the endurance guru over at Endurly, coming at you with another endurance fast fact. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, fiber. Now, not the type that makes you want to go number two during the most inopportune times during uh, running, cycling, and other endurance exercise. We're going to be talking about muscle fibers. Now, most of you know uh, muscles are composed of two types of fibers. You have your slow twitch fibers and you have your fast twitch fibers. Now, the amounts that are found in your body are the percentages between slow twitch and fast twitch are really gonna depend on a lot of things. Um, largely, it's dependent on genetics. It also uh, depends on blood levels of hormones in your body. And uh, also, your exercise habits. You know, if you're doing more purely endurance exercise or if you're doing more sprinting explosive type exercises. Um, so, muscle fiber type, largely determined by that. Um, and so how do you really find out what percentages you have in your body? Uh, the best way to do this is to have a muscle biopsy done. And besides having a needle stuck in my armpit once, uh, having a muscle biopsy done is probably one of the most painful experiences um, that you can go through. Uh, the researcher basically has this big needle, they plunge it into a muscle like the quadricep, and they take a pinch out of it, like an actual chunk of your muscle, and pull it out, and then they can test it from there. But even that has its drawbacks, uh, since different muscles in the body are composed of different ratios of fiber types. So your lower body will generally have more slow twitch fibers, and your upper body will have more uh, fast twitch fibers. So let's, let's delve into this a little bit more. What makes a slow twitch fiber slow twitch, and what makes a uh, fast twitch fiber, well, fast? It's really dependent on three things. One is dependent on the uh, oxidative capabilities of the fiber, meaning how many mitochondria are found in the fiber, um, how many capillaries around the fiber, and then three, how much myoglobin is found in the fiber as well. Now, myoglobin is something that carries oxygen into the mitochondria. So that's the first variable that determines uh, what a fiber is. The second is dependent on uh, a compound known as ATPase. Um, and ATPase basically uh, breaks down ATP um, and different fibers will have different amounts that can either rapidly break down ATP or ones that are slower. And the third variable that determines uh, what type of a muscle fiber it is is the amount of contractile proteins within the fiber, specifically actin and myosin. Uh, where you have more of these, um, basically the muscle can contract and relax faster and produce more power. So those are the three things that will determine what a muscle fiber is. So let's go into this a little bit deeper. Uh, for your slow twitch fiber, there's, there's one type, um, and this is type 1. So type 1 fibers are very oxidative, so they have a lot of, a lot of mitochondria, a lot of capillaries around it, and a high density of uh, myoglobin. Uh, type 1 fibers are extremely fatigue resistant, uh, but they can't produce a lot of force. Uh, they contract slowly and relax slowly, and that's why they're called a slow twitch fiber. Now, type 1 fibers will be found in a lot of like long distance endurance athletes, um, more so than like a sprinter. So that's the slow twitch fiber, type 1. Now, fast twitch fibers can be broken into two different types. You have type 2A, which is fast twitch, and then you have type 2X, which we can think of as a super fast twitch. Now, the type 2A does have some aerobic or oxidative capabilities, but it also has the ability to twitch a little bit faster or contract a little bit and relax a little bit faster, uh, produce more power, but they're a little less fatigue resistant um, than your, your type 1 or slow twitch fibers. So that's type 2A. And then type 2X is the, the super fastest uh, muscle fiber out there. Um, these can produce a lot of force. They can contract very rapidly, um, relax very rapidly, and just keep on going so the muscle can keep on firing away. Um, but type 2X fibers, extremely, extremely uh, not resistant to fatigue uh, like the type 1. So type 2X, you're going to find in like the, uh, the top tier sprinters in the world. So that's kind of the breakdown of the slow versus the fast twitch. Now, in terms of athletes, the way I like to look at this is, let's look at track and field, for example, and see how these muscle fiber types would apply. So 
For the Type 2X, you're gonna find that in a lot of the short, uh, or like a, a higher percentage of Type 2X fibers in people that sprint like the 100 to 200 meter dash, anything that lasts from, you know, like zero to maybe 20 seconds, where that kind of activity requires rapid contraction and relaxation of the muscle. Um, so they can just be going with speed. So you're thinking uh, events like the 100 to 200 meter dashes, those athletes probably have a high percentage of type 2X fibers. Now for the type 2A fibers, I would say runners like those going from 800 meters up to the mile would have a high percentage of type 2A fibers. And this is because they need to have that oxidative cap capabilities to run the distance, but also need to produce a lot of power. So. That would be the type 2A. And then type 1, uh, you're looking in at runners who run the, the 5K to the 10K that would be, have a really high percentage of uh, type 1 fibers. Like all these athletes will have each, each fiber type, but the amount will really determine their success um, in the event. And a lot of it, especially with the type 2X fibers, is um, genetics. You could also look at it like this, like with cycling. Chris Froome probably has a really high percentage of type 1 fibers and you know a good percentage of type 2A and probably low type 2X, where Mark Cavendish would probably have a lot of type 2A and type 2X and a, uh, you know, a fewer uh, type 1 or a lower percentage of type 1. So this uh, kind of begs the question, can muscle fiber types change with different types of training? So the research thinks that you, know, you really can't change type 1 fibers to type 2A or type 2 X fibers, but the research does suggest that 2As can be converted to 2X and then 2X fibers can be converted to 2A depending on what you're doing. Um, more specifically, strength training, like moderate strength training, like hypertrophy type strength training will probably lead to a conversion of type 2X to type 2A. And then really, really heavy strength training, uh, you probably could see you know, 2As being converted to 2X. <coughs> which you know might be beneficial for some endurance athletes who already have you know a good percentage of type 1 fibers but if you look at an obstacle course racer where you're running but you're also doing a lot of explosive activities um, it may be beneficial for these type of athletes to do like pure strength training to develop those type 2x fibers out a little bit more so when they're you know sprinting or climbing up a rope or doing explosive activities uh, those fibers are more developed and can produce a massive amount of power in a short amount of time so you can really just like explode through that activity. So that's the, that's the breakdown of uh, slow twitch and fast twitch fibers. Um, so that's about all I have for today. Sorry to geek out on you on this, but this stuff really makes me excited. And you know, somebody said to me the other day, Matt, you're a real nerd and like, you know what? I like that. I like being a nerd. I like bringing this information to you guys and to make you more informed. And I just, I generally love exercise physiology. So if I'm a nerd, I love being a nerd. All right, my endurance friends, until next time, stay fueled, stay focused, and stay fast.